people out there on the internet. My goodness. So anyway, um, all right. So we're going to go live here on the YouTubes as usual. And this should be fun. This should be very fun today. Okay, so we're live on the YouTubes. We're live here on the Facebooks and we're live on the Twitter. So that's good. Welcome, everybody. Yeah, they're just projecting and they're ignorant. I totally agree. Uh, they have zero. It's like somebody just showed up in the Facebook group, has no idea that I've been doing this for like 12 years working in neuromodulation and stimulation with ultrasound. It's like tell me to stay in my lane when the paper literally talks about stimulating the splenic vagal nerve pathway with ultrasound to tell me to stay in my lane is like you, 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 you must be smoking actual crack on the other. I, I just imagine this person's between toking on a crack pipe, telling me to stay in my lane, not talking about stimulating the spleen. I've been talking about this for two and a half years. My God, the whole reason it's in that paper is because of me. My God. <sighs> Anyway, um, all right, so let's get into it. So today is a very, very good video. Uh, we're going to talk about realistically, from my standpoint, what it realistically will take to generally what it, what it takes to repair the vagus nerve. When we're talking about the vagus nerve and generally speaking, since the group name is vagus nerve stimulation and repair, what does that process actually look like from an experienced person? who does this work professionally with clients. Um, what are we looking at time-wise? How long will it take? What does it take? What's involved in all this kind of stuff? Um, so before we go into that, I always love to start my videos off with a quick Valsalva breath. So we're just gonna take a big deep breath in. I'm gonna stop walking because you don't wanna pass out while doing this. So we'll take a deep breath in. Take a sip of air at the top. Hold it and squeeze. And then slowly exhale from the mouth. Would be a lot easier if I had one of those Namuri whistles, one of the Namuri pendants that I could blow out of as a necklace. Now, I certainly I have mine coming and a couple of you guys, TK and Char, you both have one coming uh, as a special, you know, bonus gift from me. So don't order one, you two. Um, but uh, yeah, so... That'd be a lot easier if I had the if I had the pendant. Um, so let's get into it. Hope you feel better and hope you feel more, you know, calm and all that fun stuff. So woohoo, yeah. So so let's crack into this. So what does it realistically take to repair the vagus nerve? The vagus nerve can get damaged. I um, I was asked in another Facebook group like, if my vagus nerve is degenerative, will it continue to degenerate over time? And the answer is yes, unless you resolve the core root of what is causing your vagus nerve to malfunction, your vagus nerve will continue to malfunction. We'll, we're going to explain what those processes are and what the mechanisms are. Partially, it has to do with blood flow, lymphatic drainage, cellular repair, the delivery of compounds and amino acids and proteins into your vagus nerve for the process of repair. And if some of those processes aren't happening, your vagus nerve absolutely is going to continue to devolve. A lot of people will claim and, and share, I don't doubt that they're claiming what they're really experiencing, is they feel like that they got sick, something went wrong, and they continue to get worse and worse and worse, and it just doesn't stop. And the fact of the matter is, if you still have an intact vagus nerve, there's something to be repaired but you have to do something to make that happen. You can't just sit around and hope it will happen on its own. Trust me. And in the context of time ticking, right? We're running this five-day challenge here in a few days. And one of the core things we're probably gonna talk about from the get-go on day one is that you have in front of you a few choice options. Are you gonna go with the ear clip stimulator? Are you gonna try breathing? Are you gonna try put kicking your legs up against a wall and doing yoga, right? Time is ticking, and due to the severity of your situation, if it's COVID-related, if it's diabetic neuropathy, is it because of latent trauma from your childhood, depending on the severity of it, not all of those solutions that have the title vagus nerve stimulation are going to be able to touch and address the cause of the degeneration of your vagus nerve. Um, so that's why in the five-day challenge, we want to give you the full meal deal. How do you really do this? 
So if this video in particular is of interest, then I highly recommend you re do register for the five day challenge, which is coming up very soon on Wednesday, this coming week, last day to register is going to be on Tuesday. So don't wait till the last minute. Um, but from what we've seen, generally speaking, if you choose the right things and you do the right stuff, it can take on average, if you're supporting the growth of your vagus nerve, about three to four months. So about 90 plus days for your vagus nerve to start with the repair process and to hit some kind of a milestone, a plateau, where you can have kind of a, a, a next level landing spot to do the next grade of work on your body. So that's pretty important. All right. So now let's break down. What does that look like? Okay. What? Sorry. It's there's a woman on here named stress. So when I put in adequate nutrition and low stress, Facebook tries to auto populate. Imagine having a last name stress. There you go. Or anti-stress fees. I don't even know what the hell that is. That's what it auto populates to. So hello, lark anti-stress fees. Um, so one of the crucial conditions for repairing the vagus nerve is the conditions in your body in real time. So uh, you have to provide an adequate environment and adequate nutrition in order for your vagus nerve to start getting repaired. Now, the nerve fibers, we've talked about this before. Um, and I think, okay, this is, this is going to be a cool video because I'm going to give you some math, some math here on the actual size of the vagus nerve. I was waiting to do this on Friday, but every single day we got cut off by the internet. So I was like, all right, screw it. But now we get to do this. So the nerve fibers, of which there are hundreds of thousands of nerve fibers in your vagus nerve, require essential nutrients to support their re regeneration and overall health. A balanced diet rich in vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants can contribute to the healing process. Additionally, minimizing stress is important for vagus nerve repair and repair of your entire nervous system. If you're under constant chronic stress, your nervous system isn't going to even start the process to repair any level of damage. So if you find yourself just stressing out over garbage, I mean, here's the thing, right? And again, I'm, I'm sure somebody smoking crack is going to tell me to stay in my lane, but let's take current events for instance, right? If you're dealing with a chronic stress issue right now and you are glued to your phone as an American watching what's going on in the Middle East, looking at, oh my God, the horrors of everything. Yes, it is bad what's happening in Israel and what's happening with, um, you know, basically a, a mini war breaking out in uh, around Israel and then the ensuing attacks back and forth. It's brutal. There's bad photos. But if you're sick, if you have a chronic illness, you might be addicted to that development of inner chronic stress. I have seen some clients, unfortunately, that started, couldn't complete, and then you go and look at their Facebook page, right? Because if you're a client of mine, usually we add each other as friends. I'm seeing what you guys are posting on a daily basis. And typically what I see, the, the, the clients that succeed in my program, in coaching, who are using ultrasound and are stimulating their vagus nerve and doing all the good stuff, right, in that supportive cocoon of a program is that what they post on their Facebook page is stuff that's neurologically and sociologically healthy. The ones who drop out early, the ones who say, oh, I'm just so stressed, I just can't, I just can't handle all this stuff, right? TK, Shar, are, are the things we're doing, do I tell you guys to do stressful things? Is it really, is it that difficult to do the program? It's really not. I'm sure TK and Char will say, absolutely not. It's super easy to do. It's super effective, right? And yet two in particular who dropped out recently, uh, who couldn't complete the first just 90 days of the program, um, it, you know, I, of course, I admire and respect anybody who says, look, this is not the right time for me. I'm just not in the right headspace. But I look at their Facebook page and they're posting like, Q anon conspiracy theories about the NWO and the Illuminati, uh, you know, implanting brain waves into their head to control their minds and stuff like this. And I'm like, okay, hun, I mean, look, I like TK said, not at all. Yes, the program that we run is not complex. The only reason people drop out is because they're glued to stress, chronic stress inducing 
conspiracy theory nonsense. And at that level, look, maybe it's true that the NWO and the Illuminati do want to implant con brain things in your head or whatever. It's like, look, if you're dealing with chronic stress and your health is failing you, regardless of what that's true, you got to focus on like what's really in front of you. Your vagus nerve is susceptible to conspiracy. Uh, uh, I want to use the word like, I don't even know, like mania. It's like a mania of being obsessed with news and breaking news and just the, the most base conspiracy theories ever. And I then, and then this is the other thing. They send me these messages through Facebook Messenger. They attack, you know, everybody has it. It used to be email attachments through Hotmail, right? Oh my God, did you see this? This is the thing or whatever. And it's like, they send me these private attachments. If you're engaging in this kind of insane conspiracy theory, QAnon stuff, of course, somebody telling you, let's focus on like calming your nervous system and relaxing and make space for, for a healthy life. Um, then yeah, conspiracy stuff is going to take you right off the ball. And it's going to, it's going to, you're, you're sacrificing your life to this negativity cycle of breaking news, right? So that's why adequate nutrition and low stress are like two key things to support the repair of your vagus nerve. So right now in the midst of all of this, if your health is really bad, I would just suggest unless you're under active gunfire right now, is just to not be obsessed with the latest breaking news around the world and not be obsessed with the latest QAnon, trust the plan, conspiracy theory stuff, okay? Literally, there's a one-to-one -one connection between people not even being able to complete a program and clearly being having their head deep in that rabbit hole. Um yeah. So yes. So Shar, you wrote it's dedication worth every minute I spend on my health. Absolutely. Right. Just to have to make health and healing the number one priority in life and go on a negativity and social media diet. Absolute fantastic advice. If you're going to work on your vagus nerve, avoid negativity. Thank you, Shar. Exactly. These things are huge, right? Your environment, your media environment, your social environment will make all the difference in terms of your vagus nerve being able to even say it's it's time, right? Because your vagus nerve isn't going to divert crucial resources and sugars and carbohydrates and proteins to repair if you're falsely assuming that a war going on the other side of the planet is going to somehow affect you right now. Because if you, you can, you can pretend that horrors across the planet on the other side of the earth are in real time affecting your ability to survive. You can absolutely convince yourself that that's going to prevent your body from even going into a repair cycle. And there's a huge connection. So anyway, minimizing stress levels in this media environment is crucial. Chronic stress will impede, not even can, but it will impede the restoration of your vagus nerve. In engaging in stress reducing activities such as meditation, yoga, deep breathing exercises, listening to the sleep audio. How many, how many of you have been li listening to that, by the way? I cannot seem to make it past number four on the memory process, on that counting sheep process. I literally just like am out. Deep sleep, deep restful sleep. The feedback I've been getting on that has been fantastic. People are like, I feel like I'm waking up with a more fiery personal energy. So that's something you can do. Right, listen to the hour of power in the day. I'm gonna go listen to the hour of power from, with my wife as soon as this video is done. Right? Yeah, exactly. TK, yeah, sleep audio is awesome. You do fall asleep. Me too. I fall asleep and I stay asleep for like a full, probably I'm getting like seven full hours of sleep without waking up once, unless I need to go to the bathroom or something like that. But other than that, it's it's working. Right? There's some simple things. Yeah, totally fall asleep very quickly. I am shocked at how well that works, no doubt, right? Um, it's pretty cool. So I'm pretty proud of that. And I will definitely be sharing more of that in the near future. Um, just so people know, as a little asterisk here, like a little like number one here, is that most likely the next edition that will come out for the sleep audio is, an, is about a, a, a six to seven hour blank gap of audio that you can put on the, on the speaker so that it'll play for the 55 minutes 
and then it'll be 50 minutes of pure silence. And then at the tail end of it will be a kind of, I'm still in the process of writing the script out, but something to kind of start like inducing an awakening process, right? So once you've gotten past that seven and a half, eight hour, eight and a half hour window is just to have that voice come back on very softly and say, hey, I'm so proud of you. You did such a good job. Now we're going to start feeling the energy building, looking forward to doing the hour of power today and just kind of setting the scene for what a successful systems based day could look like. So that that was the feedback my mom gave me. And I'm like, you know what? You're totally right. This needs to be a full eight and a half hour uh, sleep audio that does the going to sleep part and then wakes you up with that really strong, encouraging voice. So there's some great resources that are available to fulfill all the needs that you have, right? You're welcome. You're so welcome, TK. Thank you for it. Sterling, you're welcome. Sarah, voice is soothing in itself. I know. That's Emily. That Her name is Emily, and her voice is so good for this particular sleep meditation. So for those who don't know what I'm talking about, I'm just going to uh, type in the chat here. Don't click on it now. Stick with us for the video if you're live. Um, but vegashub.com slash sleep has the YouTube vid video enabled. You just click play, you lay down, you'll be out within 15 minutes max, right? It's awesome. It works super well. It's a Vegas informed sleep meditation. Play it before bed and you'll be off to sleep, off to dreamland. So, okay. So moving on. Okay. So next thing that I think is really important that has to be involved in terms of vagus nerve restoration is rehabilitation of function. When I say in the title of this video, signaling, right? Signaling, what does signaling mean, right? I'll type that here in the chat. Signaling proper vagus function, right? At the simplest level, what signaling means is rehabilitation of function. If you, for instance, God forbid, or you know someone who had a, an accident and they fell and they lost function in their legs or their arms from a stroke or a, a nerve injury, you know that walking, even with support, you know, having people hold you and trying to walk or supporting yourself on those arm uh, holders or whatever, is that walking and putting signals to your feet, even though it's limited, is critical for rehabilitation of function. The same thing happens with the vagus nerve. If you have a vagus nerve that isn't functioning, there are ways to use your vagus nerve actively. Now, I can't go into all of the ways to go and use your vagus nerve, but there are ways that you can consciously engage signaling through your entire vagus nerve. There are ways that you can stimulate your vagus nerve through your mind and through, through practices, through breathing practices, through stress testing, cold water, diving response, breathing. There are ways that you want to be incorporating things for your vagus nerve. And if you're not doing that, then you're essentially not using your vagus nerve. And we all know the term, if you don't use it, you'll lose it. So use it or lose it. You have to send signals through your vagus nerve for it to function properly, right? And so this is all in the zone of rehabilitation. So this plays a vital role in repairing the vagus nerve. Physical therapy or targeted exercise can help restore proper function and connectivity between nerve fibers. This is well known in all parts of the body. The vagus nerve is no exception. That also might mean supplementing with specific amino acids that will signal receptors in your vagus nerve. There are a, there's a list that I provide to clients of specific amino acids in formula that you take as drops in your mouth that signal all the way down your vagus nerve and that start sending signals up because they're specific agonists that activate receptors in your stomach that are just simple amino acids in solution. There are ways to do this that don't require a lot of work, right? Every client, you know, from day one, I say, get these amino acids, start taking it daily. That is specifically to do a number of things, but also to signal your vagus nerve to start working again, okay? So there's a lot of things with rehabilitation to enhance neural connectivity and communication. So this is really, 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 really critical. If you're not doing this, you might be wasting time. Big reason why I'm making this video, because I see a lot of people making the mistake 
of buying a device for 200, 300 bucks that says it's gonna stimulate their vagus nerve and they're doing nothing of anything else to support the process. And you might spend six months falsely believing that this one little magic electrical stimulator or pendant or whatever is gonna be the thing that you can just, I guess, abdicate responsibility to and that it's gonna magically heal your vagus nerve. The, the fact is, unfortunately, is that that's not the case. And this won't repair just doing one single thing. There's a couple of things that have to be done. So moving on to the next thing. Um, let's talk about the complexity of the vagus nerve, right? So you have a sense of just how, how susceptible the vagus nerve is to degeneration and why if you don't deal with the sources of degeneration of the vagus nerve, that things will inevitably just get worse and worse, right? We don't see that a lot, thankfully, in my Facebook group because I do a lot to provide resources to people from day one that are like breathing exercise, neck strengthening exercises, meditations, breathing, basic exercise, uh, uh, just a, a sense of positivity and hope that this can improve. Whereas if you go to other Facebook groups on you know, health challenges or even on vagus nerve dysfunction, a lot of people are posting anonymously saying like, it feels like I have no hope, nothing's working, I can't get better. Um, and I get that question a lot. If my vagus nerve is damaged, how bad can it get? And the fact is, the matter is that a little bit of a blockage in one branch of your vagus nerve can cause damage up and down the entire cervical branch of the vagus nerve, primarily because in one side of your vagus nerve, now that, listen carefully, I have the notes here. So on the left side alone, on your vagus nerve, there are over 100,000 neuron branches. So these like little lines of communication, 100,000 just on the left side. There's also more on the right side, about 150,000 on the right side. But let's just focus on the left side. So there's 100,000 neurons coursing through the left vagus nerve. To put it into perspective, if you took the width of a human hair, so just one hair, and you pulled it out, you could stack end to end, side by side, over 700 neurons in the, from the vagus nerve, just in the diameter, the width of that one vagus nerve, of that one width of hair. So one little piece of hair, you can fit 700 side to side, from, from one side to the other. That's a lot. 700 neurons, axons, of the vagus nerve can fit in one width of a human hair. Now, if you were to look at the volume, the cross section, you would find uh, how many? I believe something like, uh, okay, so if each, okay, here's the next thing. So if each axon, e each single fiber, of a neuron in the vagus nerve where the width as an index finger, right? So if you think of your index finger, this is one axon out of the 100,000 that if you could stack them on top of each other, you could stack about 25,000 of these to get the length of the vagus nerve. And you would have an astonishingly, you would have 75 feet of fingers stacked on top of each other 25,000 times. So 75, 75 feet is pretty tall. That's like the size of a seven something story building, right? So if you go to an average downtown and you look at the length of that and you think, how many fingers could I stack just in that, right? So that's how, as reference, right? We do these exercises like if the, if the planet earth were the size of a tennis ball, then, you know, it'd be like, 10 football fields till the sun. So it's the same kind of like exercise. Um, so the sheer number of nerve fibers in your vagus nerve highlights the significant challenge of individually repairing large sections of the vagus nerve. It's very tightly compacted. There's blood, blood. There has to be a blood supply in your vagus nerve. There's a lymphatic system and a nerve system. Blood brings new nutrients and the lymphatic drains out old used nutrients in this vagus nerve, which has its own sheath branch around it. So any compression, 
any damage, any blockage. If you have some, there are some channels where red blood cells go in the vagus nerve that are only the width of one red blood cell. So if you start getting caking up of plaques in the vagus nerve and you get a little bit of blockage anywhere in the vagus nerve and you have decreased blood flow in the vagus nerve, what happens when a part of your brain has no more blood flow to it? You get a stroke, you get brain damage. The same kind of thing can happen to the vagus nerve. This is why addressing the root causes of what's making your vagus nerve not function are super critical, okay? And not all the things that a single device can do for you are going to address some of those root causes. Now, a big reason why I love ultrasound is because ultrasound widens blood vessels when it goes there. So if you have any blockage in the vagus nerve in the neck, ultrasound is gonna actually widen those blood vessels up, bring in more fresh oxygen, more fresh supplies, and help clean the lymphatic tissue out. So vagus nerve stimulation with ultrasound is far superior to electrical stimulation. So I hate to say that someone made the wrong choice. I just think that there are better options given all that's available today. So anyway, so the, I think that's a key thing is that the vagus nerve is very densely packed. It's very tiny. It's about the size of the, the lead inside of a pencil. And there's 100,000 neurons packed into that. And then even further, it's, it's, it's remarkable the molecular computational ability of the vagus nerve just in that one thing. A lot can go wrong, but a lot can go right when it works properly. It's a pretty remarkable uh, thing to have work. Your life will be better if your vagus nerve is working. So before we get to the conclusion, I just want to start here, which is that it's important to have patience. This process, given the extent of damage, whether it's neurological, neurochemical, blood vessel, lymphatic related, compression, lack of use, right? Just literally not using your vagus nerve is possible. There are people walking around who on a day-to-day -day basis, because they're so much in stress, just are not using their vagus nerve at all. It sucks. So you don't want to be that kind of a person, right? You don't want to be, it's one of those use or lose it situations. But in terms of, in terms of repairing, here's some more data to chew on. It takes two weeks from the start of stimulating the vagus nerve, let's say with ultrasound, for the raw materials to then drain out of the body. Then it takes another two weeks for the, the raw materials in your stomach and your gut that you've been eating, supplementing with, for those to reach the vagus nerve. It takes two weeks in both directions. So on average, especially if you're starting and you have long-standing damage to your vagus nerve, it might take you about four weeks just to start seeing movement because you have to drain out damage and you have to replenish it with new compounds, which means first you have to be using the right, you have to be using the right equipment to stimulate regenerative processes. You have to remove the chronic stress input from your brain so that your body will accept and willingly go into a mode of repair. Just getting people to stop sucking their brains out into mass media and like thinking that, you know, a front line in Ukraine versus Russia and like all the death and destruction and the drones and like, oh my God, it's so bad that this is urgent is not. And they're like, I see this all the time. I see people really messing up their recovery because they are so sucked into this urgent and important, non-fulfilling garbage. Really, it is garbage, especially if you're a sick person. It's sad and pathetic what the mass media is doing to people who are sick, thinking that a person who is struggling with, like, let's say cancer or neurodegeneration, that they need that in the last few moments of life and the last few moments of energy that they have, that they need to be stuck on their CNN app to know what the hell is going on across the world. Like their, their level of stress is somehow going to change any of that, right? 
that they're they're gonna st they're gonna change these long-standing social ills that exist between brothers of two different countries that have been in blood feuds for their entire existence that you know that uh you know uh Karen sitting in her rocking chair on her couch watching Fox News at midnight and going, oh, it's so terrible. This is so terrible. I'm so stressed. I'm so, my heart hurts for the world that this is going to change anything. My God. No, we're just going to continue to send billions and billions of dollars across the planet. And you're not going to see a penny of that. And you're going to still pay taxes and you're still going to be sick and you're still going to probably get sick and die. Right? So, Patience is key. You got to make room for your healing. Be selfish in this way. And, uh, you know, one of the things that I cringe at the most, the biggest ick for me is seeing people on the internet looking at people who are like, I don't know, in suburban shit, suburban uh, Los Angeles saying, oh, my heart, my heart hurts for the world right now. Oh, my heart is hurting so bad. For those little people in the Ukraine, it's like, honey, you're like, you are sick as fuck. You need to like take care of yourself first. Your heart hurting isn't going to change the blood feud between people that have hated each other from the moment they were born. Okay. So, okay. I'm sorry, Karen in, uh, you know, fucking red, Redwood city, California. I'm sure your heart does hurt, but is that a good is that a good place to put your energy? Is that a good place to put your time? It's not. It's really not. So anyway, I'm just waiting for the stay in your lane kind of comment here. I'm just waiting for that foot to drop here. Stay in your lane. You don't know anything about social politics. Who are you to say anything? It's like, oh my God. Um, anyway, so yes. So it can take time. You need to be patient. You need to create the environment and the scenarios and get the support you need to repair your vagus nerve. This isn't something that's going to be done with a $9 book on Amazon. This is not going to be something that's done with a little, you know, uh, Wi-Fi emitting pendant that you wear on your neck. This isn't going to be done with a little watch that you wear on your wrist that taps your, taps your vagus nerve point. There's a lot more things that need to be done uh, to support this. Now, for instance, just to give an example of this, one of the leading companies uh, that that sells vagus nerve stimulators, electrical ones on the neck, uh, has asked me multiple times, hey, could you write about all the other things that people need to be doing to fix their vagus nerve? If they were, you know, rocking it, if guys, if electrical vagus nerve stimulation of your neck was the thing to do, you think their CEOs would be reaching out to me saying, Sterling, we need your help. We need to explain to people that strengthening their neck is important, that supplementing is important, that reducing stress is important. All this stuff that I talk about all the time. I give a fair and I'm very fair and balanced on this whole uh, situation. So in conclusion, um, repairing the vagus nerve requires a comprehensive approach that includes providing an environment with adequate nutrition, reducing stress levels, and engaging in rehabilitation exercises for your vagus nerve and for your body, generally speaking. You should be doing some manner of exercise too. The intricate nature of the vagus nerve, along with the time it takes for healing elements to just move around your body, sometimes two weeks in one direction, right? It's like we, your body doesn't work on airplane time. Your body works on molecular motors carrying serotonin from your gut to your neck at the level of two weeks, we're talking like millimeters per hour, okay? Very slow movement. So if you're like, why isn't it working? I need to jam up the electricity. I heard on this, I heard one person on a Facebook post, a random anonymous person who's probably doing an affiliate code for you to buy their electrical stimulator told me that they felt great after one day. Why am I not getting those same kind of results, right? I must, I must need to blast the vagus nerve more because clearly it's not working. No, this is the this is the sales pitch of the century. That just blasting electricity into your vagus nerve is gonna do any of the stuff that you need to get done. It's just it's it's unbelievable. And I'm not wrong here, right? We live in a day and age where people have been on benzodiazepine prescriptions for decades 
and are left way worse than before. Um, so if you think for any reason that vagus nerve stimulation and electricity is going to be anything different than what we've seen for the last forever, uh, you're, you're smoking, you are smoking crack. That's going to be my new thing. If I want to be dismissive as somebody, I'm not going to tell them to stay in their lane. I'm going to say, stop smoking crack, put your, put your crack pipe down and think about this logically. Your vagus nerve is not a your vagus nerve isn't working because it lacked a nine volt battery running through it. Okay. Your vagus nerve is probably not working because you have shitty posture. You don't exercise. You've never used your vagus nerve. You've probably never done a vagus nerve strengthening exercise ever in your life. The only time you get any vagus nerve activation at all is when you're hanging out with your girlfriends, right? When you're doing, you're being social, right? Most people do drinking when they do that too. Drinking affects your vagus nerve very negatively. If you strap a HRV monitor to someone's body and you look at what their vagus nerve is able to do when they're drunk, your vagus nerve level goes boom, like that. So most people are mixing social activity, which is rehabilitative for the vagus nerve, with drinking, which is the exact opposite of that. So it's like everybody's just got mental goggles on. I literally think most people when it comes to their health and the kinds of decisions I see people making, I'm like, hold on a second, please put your crack pipe down. Okay. Set it down on the table. You're not going to smoke out of that for just a few moments. And let's just think through the problem here. Is it really that your vagus nerve is not working because it's lacking a nine volt battery running electrical current through it? Is that why it's not working? right? Give your body. I saw this movie called Idiocracy back in the year 2000 something, right? And it was like the world had become so stupid, so dumb, so dumbed down that they forgot even how to grow plants. And the only company producing any kind of fluid was called Brondo, which is an electrolyte, basically Gatorade. And everybody, the marketing material there was plants need Brondo, Plants love electrolytes. And so they would feed, they would spray their fields with rather than, uh, you know, fertilizer or anything like that. They would just spray, sp spray their fields of food with Brondo because apparently Brondo is what plants need. This is the same level of thinking. My vagus nerve needs more electricity. Clearly it's an electrical chemical system. I just need more electricity in my vagus nerve and that's going to fix the problem. And it's like, no, it's not. Literally, please put down your crack pipe and stop lying to people about this. So, and the other thing is it can take sometimes, I, ideally, set aside the next 90 days to focus in on repairing your vagus nerve. Do all the things that are indicated. If you want to know what the things are and get practical, practical worksheets and homework and exercises and have me explain this in a comprehensive way, not in one, you know, 35 minute live video on Facebook, it's a multi-day process, join our five-day challenge. It's happening on Wednesday. You can go here. You can register on our website, vegashub.com slash five day. We have a free, it's a free to join five-day challenge. Uh, you just need to sign up there. You'll get invited to the Facebook group. You have to request to join. Please write your information in when you're joining the Facebook group. I am taking those questions that you, and, that you provide to me in joining the five-day challenge to be able to address those through the challenge directly. We have a Q and A after every video uh, throughout the days if we have time. So uh, it's important to have patience through the process by prioritizing the certain factors we've talked about today. Uh, individuals have a much better chance of restoring functionality to their vagus nerve and enhancing their overall well-being. So that will do it for today. Highly recommend that you register for the five-day challenge. Click that link now if you haven't done that already. If you have, I have probably already approved you and messaged you privately saying welcome to the five-day challenge. We get started on Wednesday the 11th at 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern. Um, if you have a question about what that is in the UK time, I highly encourage you to Google it or I think it's 7 p.m. UK time, basically. So it should still be awake by then. Um, but yeah, that's it guys. Uh, I'm about to go off for a beautiful walk to catch the sunset here. Listen to my hour of power. 
with someone that I love dearly. So I wish you the best of luck. Thank you guys so much. Normally I'd take questions, but I, I do want to get out. It's a Sunday, right? I still have my Sunday. All right, guys. So thanks so much for watching. Thanks, Shar. Thanks, TK. Thanks, Sarah. Much love to everybody. Thanks, Lori, as well. Um, yeah, tell Stan your lane to hit the highway. Thank you. Thanks, Sterling. Yes. Hit the highway and put down the crack pipe, please. Please, for the love of God, <laughs> please put it down. All right, guys. Thanks so much. I'll see you tomorrow. Um, I think the internet wizards are done working on our internet, so I should be back tomorrow. No problems there. Sorry about the hiccups. Of course, I always want to go live every day, but literally, they, like the whole internet just went off. Like they just cut the line and repaired it. So at like right at 4:50, right before 5 p.m., I was like, I'm tired of trying. This is just worth. This is just more annoying to people than ever. So I'm just gonna stop. So anyway, thanks guys so much for watching. I'll see you tomorrow and register for the five day challenge. See you guys soon. Hope you learned a lot and go out there and. Do something nice. Go do your hour power or listen to the sleep audio tonight. See you tomorrow. Bye.